New today, Indiana state lawmakers carve out billions for the budget that will carry the state through the next two years. Which areas are getting a boost in funding despite a drop in tax revenue? Plus, a group of prisoners is hospitalized after officers found them smoking something that triggered seizures. Now police are working to find out what happened behind bars. Good morning, Michiana, and welcome to ABC 57 News at 430. I'm Emily Evans. And I'm Drew Gardner. We'll have all those stories coming up in just a few short moments. But uh, first, let's begin with a check of the forecast. Meteorologist Greg Bobas joining us now in the Weather Center. Greg, we've had good afternoons. Morning, so still cold. Yeah, morning's still cold, and that's going to be the case for this morning, tomorrow morning, and then that's it. We're talking about temperatures that get better for the weekend for the mornings and much better next week for the mornings. But as far as this morning goes, bus stop forecast, cold and breezy now. The wind picking back up a little bit for today. Wind gusts up near 20 miles per hour this afternoon. 37 degrees at the bus stop, a little bit cloudier than the past few days. We had a few showers that passed through overnight. Nothing major, very hit and miss, but you can see the activity moving away from the area now. We'll still have a few more showers possible late morning into early afternoon. And then that's just about it. We'll calm back down for the rest of today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Temperature right now has us in the 30s for most of us. 34 in Knox, 39 degrees in South Bend and Warsaw, 43 in Sturgis, and a pair of 40s in Benton Harbor and Goshen. So we're starting off this morning warmer than yesterday morning. The issue is the fact we have wind this morning. So we actually feel very close to yesterday's temperatures thanks to the wind. 31 right now, the feels like temperature in Knox. Feels like 33 in South Bend and a 35 degree wind chill in Warsaw. The rest of the day takes us into some pretty good territory. 49 degrees by noon, and a 52 by 3 p.m. and a 57 for our high if we see enough sunshine. Temperature going to depend a little bit on the sun for this one. And we'll touch on that in the next forecast. Best chance for rain late morning into early afternoon. An even better chance for rain by the end of the weekend. And we'll also look at that coming up in the next forecast. All right, thank you, Greg. Five inmates are locked back up in the Elkhart County Jail after a short stint in the hospital. As ABC 57's Kaylee Bourgeois reports, police say they had seizures after smoking something behind bars. It all started around 1 p.m. Wednesday when officers were alerted of inmates having seizures. So obviously that alarmed our officers, so we responded immediately to that. Five inmates total. They were all smoking a substance. So there was an odor of a burnt substance that was smelled by the officers once they entered the ward. These patients were rushed to Elkhart General Hospital. They were treated there until about 6 p.m. last night. Just like any other medical emergency, we contacted ambulances. But officials remain tight-lipped on details. Still no word on the inmates' names, what they were smoking, and how the substance got into the tightly secured facility. How did this substance get into our facility? Do we know what it is at this point? In Elkhart, Kaylee Bourgeois, ABC 57 News. Fire marshals, all, marshals are still trying to figure out what sparked a fire at a Goshen building Tuesday afternoon. The building along East Lincoln Avenue has been smoldering now for three days. Firefighters worked all day trying to smother the flames, but hot spots reignited Tuesday night. Crews can't get inside to investigate yet because the roof is so damaged from the flames and water. The May primary elections are now just days away. And here at ABC 57, we're committed to making your vote and your voice count. Last night, city clerk candidate Derek Dieter filed a complaint against Mayor Pete Buttigieg and his recently endorsed candidate for clerk. Dieter says Buttigieg's camp violated election rules because he didn't give the election board five days notice before adding Karima Fowler to his campaign signs. But according to Buttigieg's people, Dieter has it all wrong about the law. Campaign manager Alex Roselli sent ABC 57 this statement saying, quote, Derek Dieter is simply mistaken, as has been widely reported, that law was struck down by a federal court last year. Even if the law still stood, it would not have applied to this case because our support for Karima's campaign did not constitute slating. So we wanted to ask everyday voters if the back and forth over the election rules even <coughs> mattered to them when it comes to who they'll vote for on the ballot. Oh, it's just a political tactic. I feel like most of politics these days is pretty much let's not actually ever talk about the real issues. Of course, we will continue bringing you full coverage in the days leading up to the election. Again, your cast your vote on Tuesday.
Covering Indiana now, lawmakers in the State House were burning midnight oil, hammering out last minute negotiations to vote and pass the state budget for the next two years. There were some challenges getting it passed. Lawmakers have been going back and forth with the governor's office for months because state revenue from taxes dipped this year by about $200 million. The $31 billion spending plan will take effect July 1st of this year and wrap up in June of 2017. It includes some increases to education like funding for the pre-K pilot program that focuses on learning. And the biennial budget also earmarked more funding for some higher education institutions including Indiana University and Purdue University Fort Wayne to expand some of their degree programs. State Representative Dale Devin from Granger reacted saying quote, these additional education opportunities along with increased funding to higher education institutions will benefit more students in our community and state. Another big bill was on the agenda in the last day of the session for Indiana lawmakers. The bill was for a proposed stadium for the MLS team in the Indy 11. But lawmakers ran out of time to work out the final details, so it was tabled. The first bill asked for $80 million paid for with admission taxes to build the new stadium downtown. But the most recently passed version of the bill allotted only $20 million to improve the current stadium where the teams are already playing. And happening later today, the Elkhart Memorial Military Club will unveil a wall of heroes honoring all the men and women who are alumni of Elkhart Memorial High School and served in the armed forces. The wall will display more than 350 names of local students who later on went to serve in the military. Some of them paid the ultimate sacrifice and their bravery will be remembered in a special section naming each local soldier, sailor or marine who was killed in combat. Time now, 436. Could a post you make on social media get you in trouble with the law? Well, a Georgia judge says yes. What woman's, one woman said in a Facebook rant that got her locked up. And a pilot radios in that a drone becomes dangerous, nearly clipping the jet on its descent. Temperatures finally going to start warming up after today. This is the last really cool one we have in the forecast. Good things ahead taking us into the weekend, but you may need your umbrella today. We'll take a look at the best timing for that coming up next.